I've been tinkering with a system just on the side, just playing around. And I kind of want to show you the process that I go through uh, for uh, sort of building and tweaking my system when I come up with new ideas or uh, things like that. So we have a uh, blood or sorry, Blackbird is sitting on my chart here. And uh, I also have created a bloodhound set of rules. So we have my bloodhound signals. The signals are there to tell Blackbird, here is when I want to enter a trade. I'm just really tinkering with these things just to see if I can learn new patterns and things like that. That's sort of the process is you try something, you're like, hey, I have an idea for, would this be profitable? And then you try it out and realize that, no, that was a terrible idea. That is a big part of using uh, any kind of trade system building uh, stuff like this. So anyway, here's my Bloodhound system. And then uh, I've run a back test with my Blackbird settings. <clears throat> and actually, let me take a look. And again, this is not meant to indicate that my system is profitable. I'm, I'm only testing for 30 days in the most recent CL 30 days. Uh, and so you can fool yourself into thinking that you have much better or worse of a system than you actually do uh, uh, in general. But let's go take a look at my historical results. I, I was able to eke out a profit. And again, you may consider this a lot or a little. This is the micro. Okay, so, uh, you know, a certain level of profit um, on the three-minute chart, um, 571 profit over this many trades. That might be a lot of trades, might be a little. Uh, it's up to you. Um, but we did eke out a, a higher than 50-50 on the in how many actual trades were profitable. Um, now, that doesn't say how profitable each one was. That's different. And we can take a look at the analysis and see, okay, yeah, we definitely had some down days uh, and then a bunch of up days. And then the question in real life is, could I handle one, two, one, two, three, three, four down days in a row? Would that, would, by this third day, or especially the end of this fourth day, that's, that's just dove, would I have the psychological fortitude to stick with my system? Right? And so all of these things are factors when it comes to testing and considering the value of your system. And everybody has different risk tolerance and all that. So anyway, I have a Blackbird ATM rule set here um, where it's actually pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to throw out the example so you can see what's possible here. So in Blackbird, I have two order sets. The, the first one is two contracts. And then the runner with no profit target is one extra one just to see if we can eke out that extra little bit of profit uh, on that and then relying on the stop loss to trail up. So the way I have this set up is on this first order set, I just have it set to 15 ticks with a fixed trail, meaning as price moves up, the stop loss will follow it up and then uh, hopefully we'll hit our 10 tick profit target. On our second order set, I have this a, a little bit more of a custom trailing action rule. So it starts at 15 ticks below price, but what we're doing is saying, leave it at 15 ticks, right? Don't trail until we've reached 10 ticks in profit. Meaning basically once we've hit our first profit target or our only profit target, then start moving the stop loss to a fixed trail of 15 ticks. And then we repeat that indefinitely, meaning every bar, uh, it's moving up with the price. And then eventually the price will turn around and hit uh, that stop loss, hopefully for a profit on that one last contract. Now, is this how you should trade? No, <laughs> this is not trading advice. Um, but this is just an idea I came up with. Okay. So as you saw, if we go take a look at our strategy performance. These are our metrics that we can work off of. So I say, you know what, I, I have an idea of, and I don't know if it's a good idea, but I have an idea of maybe a way uh, on those days that, uh, you know, reached $100 at some point and then dropped down below $100 could I add a rule that says, okay, once I've reached $100 profit, stop trading for the day because at least I got that 100 bucks, right? And again, you may consider that a tiny amount for your account. This is just me playing around here. So that's my idea. Let's see if it improves things. And admittedly, I tested it a minute ago and I've already forgotten if it makes things better. So <laughs> we'll find out together. I think it did, but. So um, in the money management rules, let's go in here and set that net max profit of a hundred bucks. Um, 
and we'll see, and we'll enforce it during the live trade. So that way, as soon, like the moment our unrealized profit is a hundred bucks, let's um, flatten and get out and stop trading. Okay, so let's save and close. And I still have my previous results here, so we can we can jump back to that. But now that we've changed our rules, we need to refresh the chart to trigger a new back test. So it's going to load up those bloodhound signals and load up those changes I just made um, and retest it. So let's go right click strategy performance, historical, and it did make it worse. Okay, <laughs> 523 versus, this is why I, I actually like keeping the previous window open. Oh, let me get those back up. I wanted to resize this here. I like keeping both those when or the previous window open so that you can compare your new results to the old ones. Okay, so we're saying, okay, we're, we actually have fewer trades and that actually might be a benefit because we're, we're actually in slightly increasing our percentage of trades that were profitable, probably because we're holding on to the profit once we hit a hundred bucks, um, fewer total trades. Uh, uh, but the total profitability for these 30 days are, is expected to be lower. So that's a factor you have to consider, you know, uh, brokerage fees are a factor, uh, overall risk is a factor. So now that we have that result, let me close this and this is our current one we can work off of. Let's go back in and I believe I did this earlier and again I can't remember if it improved things, but I, I kind of like the idea of not enforcing during live trading, meaning let that trade proceed, right? If we're $100 in profit so far today, let's allow the current trade we're in once we hit that point, let's let that play out. And uh, does it go against us or does it end up resulting in even more profit, allowing the, the current trade to play through? Because maybe maybe the current day is going great, so we don't want to stop it mid-trade. Maybe, maybe we're doing well. So let's turn that off, save and close reload the chart to trigger a new back test and check our results. This is the one that was better. Okay. Yeah. So it went from 571 originally to 577. So it's actually not a huge difference. I mean, these are tiny numbers, tiny differences, six bucks. Uh, but these are things, but actually looks like uh, fewer trades. So 198 versus 223. So we were able to get the same total profit, a little better actually, with fewer trades than our first try. So that's interesting. These are all just the, the things you can look at to inform you about the quality of your system as you're working on it. As you probably know, Ninja's backtest engine is not perfectly accurate. You know, slippage is a factor that's not considered here. Um, if you trade intra-bar, then you may consider doing playback connection instead. So there's lots of ways to skin this cat. This is not a video about backtesting, but I just wanted to throw this out here as a, a way that you can benchmark your systems very quickly. You say, I have an idea, let's go tweak our system. Just to throw an example involving Bloodhound, let's go make one little tweak. Um, I, I have three different signal systems. Let's just turn one of those off. Actually, no, uh, I have an RSI rule. Let's, let's disconnect the RSI rule. And when we close this window, it saves our Bloodhound file. Um, and so now we just refresh the chart, kick in that new back test with the new signals, and see, I have no idea. I, I bet it's gonna make it a little bit worse because I put that rule in there for a reason, but let's take a look here. Uh, it made it better, okay. I'm gonna have to, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to look at my individual trades and see why, uh, why that made things better. And maybe it's just the quantity of trades, but the percentage of trades uh, that were profitable improved a little bit too. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to dig around and look at individual trades, right? So like this guy, this short trade, we entered here, and again on back tests, Ninja Trader sticks the entry on the open of the next bar, which on minute base bars, that's that's pretty close to accurate. It's, it's still useful. So uh, you enter here, and then it goes down. We hit our profit target, our, our uh, two contracts uh, at 10 ticks, profit target. And then as you can see, it came way down here and hit our stop loss. That means our, tra our uh, trailing was working, right? So it hit that. It started trailing to something like this level, and then as price went down, the stop loss came down and hit that. Um, this one, we hit both our stop losses. This one, we hit uh, profit target, and then the huge trailed stop loss. So it seems like um, if we lose, we lose a little bit. If we, get, if we win, 
uh, we have a potential for for really good win thanks to that that runner. But again, uh, I I couldn't tell you if this is a good way to go about it in terms of uh, trading methodology. This is purely just poking around and and finding patterns and learning why did this thing work when this other thing did not. That's a big part of the way some people use these tools is just quickly iterating ideas and uh, sometimes just stumbling upon a good idea and then working backwards to see why it was a good idea or why it was a bad idea. Okay, so. And then once I'm ready, and I'm far from ready personally for this system, it's just messing around. But once I were to be ready, I could just click auto trading on and on a live market. Um, as signals come in, it will automatically enter my trades according to my rules. Um, playback connection is a really great way to simulate that and kind of see how it behaves live. So if you're new to this stuff, obviously you're on our YouTube channel, so you've probably been in our world, but uh, hopefully that gave you uh, just one idea for the way that some people use these tools, which is coming up with ideas and iterating uh, through them quickly to see if you can glean some information about the changes you're making.